multas pergentes, et multa per aequara vectus, adveni vas miseras frater ad inferias. Ut te postremo donarem munere mortis, et muta ne qui qual loquer ercinere, quando quidem fortuna mihi tet abstulit ipsum. Eu miser indigne frater ademte mihi. Nun, Amen. In te re haic, prisco quae more parentum tradita sunt, tristi munera din ferias. Acipe fraterno multum mananti afletu, at quim perpetuum frater aue atque vale. The following are notes on pronunciation, word order, alliteration, and meter for Catullus' poem. I've made this video in conjunction with my colleague Matthias, who's done an excellent poetry lesson on Catullus 101 to complement my video. Um, you'll find the link to his lesson in the description of the YouTube video. First of all, pronunciation. Multas pergentes et multa per aequara vectus adveni vas miseras frater ad inferias. So, first of all, the R is trilled in pergentes because the R is before a consonant, and also in frater, because it's after a consonant, but when the R is between two vowels, for example, uh, aequora, or uh, miseras, or inferias, it's not trilled. Um, also note that if an R is at the beginning of a sentence, or at the end of a sentence, it normally is trilled. Regarding accent or stress, the accent is on the first syllable for words with two syllables, first of all. If there are three or more syllables, the accent is on the second to last syllable or the penultimate, if the vowel is long by nature, that is, if it's a long vowel or a diphthong, or long by position, which is when it's followed by two consonants. Otherwise, it's on the third to the last syllable, which is called the penultimate. For example, in aequora, it's on the first syllable because the O is short. In adwenio, the same thing. The I is short. In miseras, the same thing. The E is short. In uh, inferias, the same. For adwenio has, the O can be pronounced softly as a W or can be completely elided. In Vox Latina, Allen suggests that total elision occurred only when a short vowel was followed by another vowel or H plus a vowel. So here it can be Adweni was or adweni as, depending on how you want to do it. Next we have ut te postremo donare munere mortis et muta ne qui qua loquere kinerem. 
So first of all, uh, for postremo mortis allo querer, the R is trilled in all of those cases. For donarem munere, mun, uh, the EM followed by the an M or a P or a B was pronounced like an M. So it's donarem munere. In mutam nequiquam, here the AM before an N, a T, or a D was pronounced like an N. For nequi qualoquerer, the AM is elided before a vowel, or the nasalized A could be blended with the A of a next, the next word, if you prefer. For kinerem, the EM would become a nasalized E. Next, we have quando quidem fortuna mihi te tabstulit ipsum, heu miserenigne frater ademte mihi. Uh, for quando quidem, the O is, actu- is long, but because of the necessities of the meter here, it was actually pronounced short. It's called iambic shortening, and so it, the, the meter would go quando quidem. So although it's long, here it was pronounced Short. Um, then we have quando quidem at the the end. The em became a nasalized e. Uh, fortuna frater. We have a trilled r again. Te te absolit. I like blending the e with the a, but it's also possible here to elide it. Ipsum, ipsum, the U-M, the U would become nasalized and the M not pronounced. With indigne, the G-N, would, the, the G would be pronounced more like an N-G before an N, so it would be indigne, indigne, not indigne, indigne. Nunc tamen in terre haec prisco quae more parentum tradita sum tristi munerad in ferias. For nunc, the N before a C would be pronounced like an NG. So it's, it's not nunc, it's nunc, nunc. For in terre haec, the A could be elided or blended. The H would be um, either silent or pronounced very softly. So, intere haic. Prisco tradita, tristi, the R's there are all trilled. For parentum tradita, the U-M followed by a T or a D or an N becomes pronounced, is pronounced like a UN. So it's parentum, not parentum. Um, Munerad, the short E here is elided. Acipe fraterno multo manantia fletu at Quin perpetuum frater aueatque vale. So for fraterno perpetuum frater, they all have a trilled R. Multum manantia, the in multum, the M is pronounced like an M because it's before an M or a P or a B. At quin, the e, the short e is 
elided, so it's atquim, then imperpetuum, the N, the, the N before a P would be pronounced like an M, so it's imperpetuum, not in perpetuum, it's imperpetuum. For a perpetuum, the U-M would become a nasalized U. And then awe atque wale, the E can be blended or elided, awe atque wale, awe, or some people would say awatque, I prefer awe atque, blended, I think is nicer. Regarding word order, Catullus does some interesting things that I wanted to point out. Um, first of all, with prepositions, like where he says, multas pergentes et multa per aicora, he puts the preposition in the middle. Um, I think he's doing that partly to emphasize the multas. I'm honestly not sure whether or not that's also common in prose. So if anybody has any information about that, they could maybe share that in the comments. Um, next note how he says, has miseras ad inferias. Again, he's putting the preposition after. And then note with mutam nequiqua loquerer kinerem, it's what I would call an A, B, B, A word order. The mutam and kinerem go together, and then nequiqua loquerer go together. And then he has fortuna mihi te tabstulit ipsum. Here it's interlocking, it's like A, B, A, B. You have uh, fortuna goes with abstudit, and then tete goes with ipsum. I think it's interesting too, just to note that the the mihi and the tete are next to each other, almost uh, emphasizing the the intimacy between the two brothers. Um, then you have miser indigne frater ademte again. A, B, A, B, miser and frater go together, indigne ademte go together. Then uh, fraterno multum mananti afletu, you have A, B, B, A. Uh, the fraterno fletu go together, and that sort of brackets or surrounds the multum manantia that go together. As you know, in Latin poetry, the poets don't use end rhyme like we often have in English poetry, but there's a lot of repetition of sound, and they do that um, for emphasis or just because it sounds nice, and so there's repetition or alliteration or sometimes what's called assonance. So I'm going to point out a few examples here. Um, in the first line, you have multas per, multa per, em, um, repeated for emphasis. And then note in the first two lines, you have a repetition of the as multas, uh, has, miseras, inferias, the repetition of that as is very nice. Um, and then you have a repetition of the M. You have M in multas, multa, miser. You have the M repeated. Um, with the word frater, that's repeated several times. You have frater, frater, fraterno, frater. So that's just emphasizing the theme of the poem. It's about the his brother who has who has died and then you have uh, ad inferias in line two and then you have 
Uh, towards the end, you have ad inferias repeated again. Um, also note, you have uh, multas, multa, and then towards the end of the poem, you have multum repeated again that sort of ties the poem together. Uh, then you have uh, uh, postremo donarem munera mortis. You have a repetition of the M there, and you have MU with munere mutam. I think that's deliberate, those two similar sounds. Then going down a bit, you have uh, prisco and tristi. Prisco quae more parentum tradita sum tristi munere. I think it's nice how you have the Prisco and tristi, very similar sounds. And then you have tradita and tristi, the TR, TR repeated. And then at the, towards the end, you have uh, multum, oh, fraterno multum anantia fleto. You have a repetition of the F in fraterno, in fleto, and then multum anantia. M multum manantia, M, M, M. And then in the end, you have atque, atque, repeated twice for emphasis. And then in the last three words, you have the A, again, in A three times, and the V sound repeated in awe and in wale. The meter of this poem is called the elegiac couplet, which is a Greek metrical form that was later used by many Roman poets. Catullus was probably the first Roman poet to use it on a grand scale. Um, he uses the elegiac couplet in his poem 65 through 116. Each couplet consists of a dactylic hexameter verse. Uh, a dactyl is long, short, short. Hexameter means six metrical feet, um, followed by a pentameter verse. Pentameter is five feet, and it's actually two halves of two and a half feet each. And so here's um, how it looks. It goes like long, short, short, 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 long, and then X means either. Um, so that's the first. And then long, short, short, long, short, short, long, pause, long, short, short, long, short, short, then long. Um, the dash symbolizes a long syllable, a U short. U, U with an underline means it can be either, and X can be either long or short in the first line. Um, some of the dactyls <clears throat> can be replaced with a spondy, two long syllables, which gives a more somber tone, and there are lots of... Um, spondaic lines in this poem because it's a very sad poem. The double bars in the pentameter verse indicates a pause between the two halves of the line, and that's called a sejura. And I've scanned the first two lines. Um, the sort of the way the meter goes is like, Dum, 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 de de dum, de de dum, 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 de de dum, de de dum, dum, de de dum, de de dum. It's very, very serious. Multas pergentes, et multa per aicora vectus. 
ad vini vas miseras frater ad inferias.